So, the next part of this is the teen boards. And now we're going to do symbol. So we would take these out. <clears throat> and I do want to stress again that the children are always setting all this up. I'm never like having everything out and having people go around the room and that would be weird. Um, so anyway, this would just be along the same lines of what we just did, except for here. We're going to slide this in here and say, that is 11. And I'm going to put 10 and 2, and that's 12. Same thing, same language. 10 and 3, well that's 13. This one usually goes a lot quicker because they've already got the concept in their head and they've already got the quantity in their head, so usually this takes one day. And usually they look at me like, oh, this is so boring. But they do it anyway because it's really cool to slide them in here and play with them like that. So usually pretty quickly then we put the beads and the boards together. And normally I would lay them all out here beautifully like we just did at the table. But for the sake of us, we would just do it this way. And we would have... 11 and 11. And then 12 and 12. Clear enough? Mm -hmm. And that too is tons of repetition and putting them in order, and you'd be surprised how many children don't feel like they need to put them in order, and that's okay at this stage, it really is, and before we'd move on, I'd get them to the point, let's put them in order, but you know, I think that we play so many games with what is this and where is that and that kind of thing, I think they just think of them as, you know, different numbers. Some people are very drawn to putting them in order, some people aren't. So, once we got through all that, then you move to the ten boards, tens boards. And that is the first lesson is simply that, that 110. But this begins to give you the language of there's two tens and there's two tens. That's 20. <coughs> there's two tens and then three tens, three tens, and there's three tens. We call that 30. So they're doing this at the same time that we're doing the bank game and they're starting to read these big long numbers. So they're not saying 6,910 before, you know what I mean? They're starting to understand that it's 30, 40, on and on. Um, the second exercise with this that I would argue is even cooler is there are some numbers in here. And this is direct preparation for counting the hundred chain. And on and on, obviously. So we've got ten. Now we have eleven. And there's eleven. And twelve. And twelve. 13 and 13. Now on the whole thing, when you get to 10, of course, what do you do? You exchange. And then you would have 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Something I love about this too is I really feel like it gives them a very concrete impression of the fact that there has to be a quantity before there can be a number. You know? They start putting in the numbers real quick, and I say, well, what is, is it here? Is there that much or not? Do you have that much? Before you can say it, before you can write it down, you have to have it. So I think that's pretty neat. Can you answer any questions about these kids? I actually have a question. Okay. Because I've never it. seen it done in the classroom. I've only had it taught to me like this. Mm -hmm. How long does it take them to actually go through and do every single... It gets pretty labored towards the end. <laughs> um, but uh, usually I'll sit with them through, like, till we get to 40. And then I'll say, okay, do some. And then usually by, like, 55, they quit. So, but then the next day they can start where they left off. Okay. You know, just kind of keep track of it. Okay. And then they might do 10 a day, you know. Mm -hmm. But I really don't let them move on till they've gone to 99 because if there's so many chains, it's, it's, uh, it's important that they know that 70 comes after 60. 
Otherwise, I'm constantly going to be sitting there with them when they're doing chains, and they won't know what's next. So it might be laborious, but it, it works.